Chapter 73 The Endless Diversity of the Spiritual Individualities Life in the Spiritual World When Oelim had thus ended his narrative, all the patriarchs began to be highly amazed, and they said to one another, No, it is hardly bearable. Here the sublime, spiritually miraculous transcends all our concepts. One should think that every human would necessarily find one and the same within. But what endless diversity individually. But the other Abidim went secretly to Enoch and said to him, as it were asking, Listen, you, my dear brother Enoch, with all my enlightenment and my calling, it is becoming quite dark before all my senses. Do tell me whether you know what's what. I could just about sink into a hole in the ground. Now six of these messengers, all of them descended from Seth, have revealed their inner visions. But what a different vision each of them has found within. How, then? Is it with the spiritual life in the spiritual world? Will there the spirit people no longer live with and among each other as we do here on earth? For if everyone carries his own world within, the question arises, will, for instance, in the world which is every human's own, be a place also for his brothers, or will they be able to approach each other with their endlessly vast world? Or will they, whenever they want to approach someone, draw in this world which only they can inhabit, in the same way as a snail retracts its feelers as soon as they touch some strange object? Behold, dear brother Enoch, these are things and conditions which to me bear as little relation to each other as does a burning mountain with lightning and thunder to a vessel full of cow's milk turned sour. I must admit, the more I now ponder over it, the more confused I become and, as is a habit with me of yore, also the more ignorant if you have some light in such purely spiritual things, let me also have just a little spark. For I do not dare approach him now that he is so busily engaged with the Twelve. Do you know, although I am mightily attracted by him, it is really a somewhat risky matter. With my still prevailing ignorance, I should get a strong reprimand. And believe me, one has always the most peculiar feeling to be thus reprimanded by him. Therefore, tell me at least three words, so that I do not stand there so stupidly and listen blindly to all that is being discussed. However, as you will. Amen. But before the known Abidim had uttered the last word, the high Abidim stood between him and Enoch, asking Enoch, Beloved Enoch, what sort of an answer will you give to this weed of a question on the part of my namesake? And Enoch replied, Holy Father, I believe that where there is no tree, the wind will have little to uproot. In my opinion, Abidim's questions are too lofty and of a nature that hardly anyone will find an answer to them except you, you holy, dear Father. 
But the known Abidim at once fell down before the high Abidim, imploring him, O oh, you dear, holy father of us all, forgive me, poor, foolish simpleton, not only before you, but before all fathers, mothers, brothers, and children of both sexes. For I have now surely committed an immensely great blunder through these my unusually untimely questions. But what else can I do when such an incomprehensible, unheard of miraculous manifestations occur through your infinite goodness, love and grace? But the high Abidim, calming him, said, Abidim, rise and set your mind at rest. Your questions are, of course, a mere weed of the material world. But also I created the thorns and thistles, so that they might awaken you through their spikes whenever you run blindly and at random over the land, not knowing where and why you are going and what you are wanting. Behold, thus are also your questions. Do not imagine that they actually grew on your own soil, but I myself have let them shoot up within you, so that thereby you might be awakened from your old, recurring sleep, and at least become aware of a need for your inner man to awaken, and with his primordial light, at long last, take you prisoner together with your night. so that you may fully realise the great folly of your question, and that with one stroke. Tell me what you think. What are all the created things fundamentally? Here, the known Abidim was taken aback, and finally said, Well, as far as I know through you, you dear Holy Father, they are nothing else but fixed thoughts out of you. And the High Abidim replied, Well answered, but tell me also whether I have to retract the same, like the snail when it retracts its feelers. If I now want to approach you children and step before you all. Here the known Abidim was still more taken aback and remained silent. And the high Abidim asked him once again, And whenever you hold thoughts, lofty and low ones, and all sorts of desires springing from these your thoughts. Tell me, when have these ever been an obstacle due to which you could approach no one? Yet these, your very inner thoughts, are your inner spirit world as such. And when you think of someone, he is already in spirit with you. And the known Abidim replied beseechingly, O oh, Holy Father, forgive, forgive me, poor simpleton, for my foolishness is truly great. Now everything is becoming clear to me. But the high Abidim thereupon said to him, So go to your erstwhile place and pay attention to all that will still come and henceforth no weed of the most foolish questions will sprout in you. For this is why I let the twelve reveal their visions, namely, that in all future you shall be, and remain, spared any doubt, now and in eternity. Amen.
Understand this well. Amen.